Thank you so much for being on the programme today. It's great to speak to you. So what's your reaction to today's immigration figures? Well, for those who don't follow these things in detail, and that's, I suspect, the bulk of the population, they must be very confused because the Office for National Statistics are revising the way that they undertake the calculations. I think the term used is experimenting. And as a consequence, the figures have been revised up and we're not sure whether they're going to be revised down in the future. But obviously they're very bad news for those, and that is clearly the government, who have been parading that they wanted to get immigration figures way down. Remember the tens of thousands? Not 672,000 or 745,000. So we're, we're in a different ballpark altogether. Yeah, that ten th tens of thousands does feel like another sort of lifetime almost. So in your view, is immigration too high? Well, it depends which part of it you take. I think it's really important to understand that if you strip out those who have come from the Ukraine and Hong Kong, and this was true of last year as, as well, and you take out, which I think we should, full-time education students, both undergraduates and postgrads, then you have a very different picture. And I was amazed to find myself agreeing today with uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who rightly says that the issue, are not in terms of secure borders or what we should do to, to deal with traffickers, but as, a, as an issue of migration, uh, the small bo boats issue is a complete distraction, in his words, distraction, and I believe that. So I think we've just got to take the different parts of what we're seeing today, get a grip where we need to. So if people are bringing immigrants in on work visas and they're paying them less than the going rate, we should deal with it. If people are bringing in dependents in an inappropriate way, we should deal with it. But we should have a rational, long-term approach. And I think from the Conservatives' point of view, they've got to ask themselves this question. Do you believe in markets? If you believe in a labour market, then you have to fill vacancies from somewhere. So does that mean you're quite relaxed, then, with the current level of immigration? No, I'm not relaxed, because I think the system's out of control. I think 165,000 people were, were, were waiting for their uh, applications to be processed. And I think a failure to understand that you actually have to deal with uh, other countries if you're going to get this right, including much better agreements with the French. I think all of that can be done. But I think if you elevate immigration as a major political issue and then you fail to deliver, it's not surprising that people become disillusioned. What do you make about the current uh, Labour Party's position uh, when it comes to immigration? Well, I think we've quite rightly seen it as part of a much bigger picture of uh, getting people into work, of the skills agenda. I produced uh, or led on a report for Keir Starmer uh, some time ago now, which laid out a whole range of recommendations for reskilling as well as skilling people so that we can fill the vacancies of the future, uh, particularly with the onset of artificial intelligence and robotics. The world's going to change dramatically, and we need to help people progress in work and to be secure in facing these enormous changes and I think if we get the, the perspective right across the board in terms of policies that are joined up we can reassure people what I really fear is that if we're not very careful we'll end up with a situation that the Dutch are in today where they've had a far-right party do so well that uh, their leader is claiming to be the next Prime Minister and that mirrors of course the far-right Prime Minister of Italy but even she is more moderate, more humane in terms of what they call offshore processing of asylum claims than we are because she believes that it should be done by Italian uh, immigration officers, not some other country. You're talking about Rwanda there, I guess. I'm talking about Rwanda. I'm talking about the way in which the Italians, under a far-right government, would allow people back into the country if they were uh, deemed to be legitimate asylum seekers. The Rwanda policy doesn't even allow that. It's a one-way ticket, which is why the Supreme Court was so jumpy about the safety of people who go there. Do you think there is a risk as, of, as you put it, a far-right government or politicians taking control in the UK as well? No, I don't, because uh, I think Labour will win the general election, but there's nothing to say that the Conservative Party won't absorb even further those elements that they already embraced when many members of UKIP joined the Conservative Party. And we saw that with the influx of MPs in 2019, which were very much to the right uh, of the previous cohort. So 
th there are two ways this can go. Either a far-right party on the fringe uh, starts to develop as the BNP uh, did s some years ago, uh, or a, a right-wing conservative party emerges uh, with all the elements that we've seen over recent weeks with the previous Home Secretary.